is there anything that, they, that you want to add that would that you think that I missed that I need to know about for the show? Um, yeah, well, I want to uh, comment on a, uh, a tape of Laurie Spiegel's, and maybe that could lead into her work, where the computer not only plays the music, but also uh, composes the uh, music. Okay. So far, all the examples that I've played have been performed on the computer, but composed by people. But there are many composers today who are interested in using the computer to help them compose the music. Instead of writing down the individual notes, they write down a program, uh, and then the computer calculates the notes. An associate of mine, Laurie Spiegel, uh, composes some of her music in, in this way. And I have a tape of examples uh, of an example that was recently played in New York City. Okay, Lori, how did it all start for you and computers and music? Well, with computers as such, uh, I was doing a lot of work with uh, analog synthesizers in the late 60s, and I'd worked with tape recorders before that. I was doing a degree in conventional orchestral composition. And uh, I had been working with, uh, well, I'd gotten very excited about analog synthesizers for quite a number of, of reasons. I, I kind of loved them. But after maybe three, four years, I was pretty fed up with the fact that they didn't have memory. I wanted the best of all possible worlds. I wanted the same kinds of facility I had with a piece of paper with, without losing the ability to really hear the sounds and have a much bigger vocabulary of oh, expressive material uh, of types that sort of could never be notated, let's say, a full range of possibilities sonically. Um, and I wanted the logic as well as the memory. The, the, the ability to uh, encode more or less a description as a general rule rather than making a whole bunch of specific notes. Okay. Can you just define for me that, yeah? Uh, okay, anytime. Okay, so you want to tell me just briefly how you got started with computers, what, what interested you? In? I got involved with computers and music out of frustration and other ways of doing music in part and also because of the incredible potential that they had uh, for combining the best of all other worlds, let's say, uh, the memory, the logic, the ability to actually interact with sound in real time was uh, began to be possible, uh, the, the complete freedom to define any kind of world you wanted and, and work within it, and uh, a different kind of general language for describing sound in which you're not limited to, um, well, let's say the way conventional notation is limited in, in your thoughts. That, that I started really with the imagination and the, the need to express things in music, and the computer gave me a lot more freedom. Okay, just wait till the doors close. Here comes Max. And um, just, uh, can you just give me a, a little um, definition of some of the vocabulary? What's the difference between an analog synthesizer and a digital synthesizer? Well, uh, you first worked with an analog. Yeah, analog synthesizers are at that point were large modular systems. Uh, there were only a couple in existence. Uh, Don Buchla and Robert Moog had built them in the 60s, and they were very general and flexible. Uh, they, they worked by analogy, analog. Uh, things were proportional to each other. Um, it, it's a very different kind of logic from digital logic, which works with numbers and discrete sort of stepwise increments. And the level of logic complexity is rather more limited. The degree of spontaneous interactability, uh, physical interface with an instrument was actually higher in general in the analog uh, instruments. How has your music evolved in response to, to new technologies or did you look at the technology and say, I can make this kind of music with it, or did you um, want to make this kind of music and then look for the technology? It's a kind of, there's a kind of a synergistic 
uh, oscillation between the degree that the technology that you work with suggests possibilities to you and the degree to which you come to a particular technology because you already have envisioned something or want to express something and it's the right terminology. This is not really any different with computers or other electronic instruments as say the the way you might be involved traditionally with writing for a violin versus a harp. Now these are or a percussion battery. These are totally different characteristics of, of expression and the more you work with one, the more it suggests things to you you might not have thought of had you not work with it that extensively, but it it starts nonetheless with some kind of an inner need to express something or, or a fascination with something that you hear or feel, want to pursue an idea. Um, what's the most exciting thing about, about the field for you? Well, this is, this is a time at which many people feel that there's sort of are a lot of dead ends in music that there isn't a lot more to do. This is actually I see this, and through the technology I experience this as quite the opposite. This is a period in which we realize we've only just begun to scratch the surface of what's possible musically, and I think that's true in terms of the depth of expression as as well as the wide range of forms that music and the other arts can take. Uh, when you, when you look at older techniques of doing music and art and, and uh, other expressive uh, creative things that we humans do, you realize that the constraints and the difficulties were rather extreme and it's kind of amazing that as much wonderful work has been created as has been, considering how cumbersome it's always been to write music. Uh, most music is written in a vacuum, you can't even hear it until you're done with it, if you ever get to hear it. Uh, it's you get very lost in a lot of little detail. Uh, computers can help you stay in touch, actually, with the values that are important to you in a piece at the aesthetic level by taking care of a lot of detail for you. There. Okay. Um, I have a tape of, of you performing. Can you tell me what's, what's different about that than, say, the work that you do now? How has your work changed since then? If you look at the tape of me performing on that large box with all the sliders carefully, you'll notice that I'm actually playing very few of the notes that you're hearing. In fact, a lot of what you're hearing are not notes, but more or less textures that um, are built up of many, many events, far more than a single individual could ever play. Uh, in effect, the computer is an amplifier of what I can put out as a human being in sound. Uh, it permits me to create far richer sonorities and hopefully much uh, deeper expression ultimately than I could ever do with simpler instruments. Mm -hmm. And so the work that you do now, how does it look different than, than that performance? Well, I, I am not really, by and large I'm not a performer. That particular piece is a, it's a mixture of composition and performance. Uh, a lot of what's being played is being composed by the computer in response to what I do. A lot of it comes out, out by virtue of rules, decision-making processes that I've given it, whereby it takes note of what I'm doing and figures out what to do in response to accompany me. Uh, this, this is obviously scratching the surface, and that particular tape was done half a dozen years ago. Uh, so it's early stages of a lot of this, and there is plenty of room, actually, for many people to go much further with all these ideas. Um, one thing that you mentioned earlier is that the computer is not only a new instrument, but it's also a time-saving thing for musicians. Can you just tell me what you mean by that? Well, computers, people forget this, but computers were originally developed, along with a lot of other technology, uh, as labor-saving devices. Now, they have two effects. One is, hopefully, to make certain things easier, uh, to get rid of some of the repetitive work that we don't want to have to do. For example, trans for example transcribing music to paper. Again. 